Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another casted game for Age of Empires 4 and guess what we have got a momentous occasion something for the history books this is going to be a fantastic game between Marine Lord playing on the northwest corner of the map in green as the Ottomans and in the southeast we've got none other than the Mister playing in teal as the Malians two of these fantastic players of Age of Empires 4 playing two new civilizations coming to Age of Empires 4 very soon as a full DLC at the moment we're in the preview aspect of things on a new map as well the map is Oasis we've never seen this before but we're seeing it now two new civilizations a new map what more could you want stick around for this game it's gonna be fantastic the Oasis holy moly it's gonna be a massive ring of wood around the center and inside this ring of wood we've got two sacred sites two boars and a lot of fish a heck of a lot of fish so it's definitely breaking through to the middle is going to be super important now one thing to talk about speaking of war as far as i'm aware both civilizations have an islamic background so i don't think either civilization can harvest the food there on the boar but i mean to be honest with you on a map like this when you've got short fish here i don't think you're going to want to because uh, the fish food there will be very very good for both civilizations now we're going to be talking a lot of new things about the civilizations new metas new strategies new units new landmarks new everything is coming to deal to this dlc with age of empires 4 so we're going to be focusing on a couple of new interesting aspects of these civilizations new units there we see a scout okay that's something familiar we we have come across a scout before but as we can see here a pit mine coming out for the malians I've had a look at this a little bit in the previous casted game, which if you haven't seen, it's worth checking out. That was between BCQT and Numadan. We are seeing this pit mine, which is, of course, unique to the Malians. What's really interesting about this is it does establish a bit of base building. Because as, as you can see, the gold extraction rate of the open pit mines is increased by 25% for each house or mining camp built within the influence. So as you can see, Mr. Very purposefully building those houses around the pit mine to increase the... Uh, increase the percentage that you kind of extract out and increase the efficiency really but as you can see the pit mine itself generates 30 gold per minute which is just under one villager per minute extra not per minute actually just one villager entirely passively income uh getting gold income and of course you can see the villagers work mining gold as well so it's super interesting because the more buildings you have the more efficient it makes these villagers that got uh, mining gold and so Build orders is going to be a bit tricky. Like if you want to codify and standardize build orders, it's going to be a little bit, little bit tricky in terms of calculations and things. You're going to have to be a bit more of a touchy feely player, I feel, if you're going to be playing as the Malians. And we see the Mansa Quarry being built by the Mister. The landmark to get him up to the feudal age, generating 75 gold per minute, and can be toggled to generate stone instead, should you wish. The 75 gold per minute, that's going to be just under two villagers worth for, throughout the whole game. So it's not bad, especially because it's an infinite source of stone or gold. And, um, you know, if you toggle this to gold, for instance, by the time you get to the castle age, you should be able to afford to keep, depending, obviously, how quickly you decide to go to that castle age. And we see on the west side of the map for the Ottomans, played by Marine Lord in green, the twin minaret Medrese. So the landmark to get him to the feudal age will be the Twin Minaret Madresse, which acts as a mill, grows four berry bushes, which can be harvested 50% faster. Berry bushes are regrown after 120 seconds if depleted. Okay, that's super interesting. So this is going to be, that's actually a really nice landmark, it seems. Because it grows, it's an infinite source of food. It grows four berry bushes, which can be harvested 50% faster as well. So super fast to gather the food. But also they're regrown after 120 seconds if depleted. Acts as a mill as well, so you can get that early wheelbarrow should you wish. Do you know what I'm super interested about, guys? If you've seen my channel in early stages of Age of Empires 4, you know that I do a lot of build order work. So this is super interesting for build orders because you'd be able to get an early wheelbarrow out of this, possibly. As we see a lot of villagers on that stone mine. Looks like Marine Lord are going to be opting for a second town centre with M the Mister. We're going to start walling up this west side. And I have to say, I'm pretty hyped about this game so far and this new DLC because of... You know, fantastic players like this can be showcasing these two new civilizations as well. As you can see, the Mansa Quarry has been toggled onto gold and trying to break through almost that well. It's going to be trying to get through to that middle eventually there, the Mister, you feel. It looks like both players might be opting for second town center. In fact, no, the Mister's not. He's not going on stone himself. He's building a ranch, a cattle ranch, which is an interesting uh, game mechanic here because... So... What happens here is the cattle ranch can actually... Oh, hang on a minute. He's already got two cows there already. There you 
So this can actually make or train cattle, as it were. Or do they spawn? Or is he is he is he building them? I think he... No, I think he's actually training them. I think he's training the cattle. It costs a hundred gold. Does he get a fourth one here? Yeah, he does, yeah. It, wait. Oh no, it's coming from the mill. Oh, okay, that's why it's working. So the mill is what makes the cattle. But this is interesting. So the cattle ranch... Oh, okay, I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The mill makes the cattle at 100 gold per... It takes 15 seconds. And the, the cattle then can garrison inside the cattle ranch. And the cattle ranch then generates 28 food per minute. Oh, that's super interesting. So I wonder how much a cattle ranch costs. Because effectively, you could just build like infinite number of these, couldn't you? And then just generate loads of passive food. That's super interesting. That's a super buff, actually. Pretty interesting. Will there be hunting and wild animals? I would love to see that be the case. So that was a question in chat on the live stream. That would be interesting. I mean, certainly I suspect it can be done. But the thing is, is that for these two civilizations, I'm not sure if it's even that worth it. Like, especially if you go up with the twin minaret madresse, you get the you get the berries and. This is 50% 50, 50 faster picking at this. And as you can see now, we see the Marine Lord is taking the uh, the deer there. Right? So there's a bit of an example there. And it looks like, look at the Mister going full ham on these. Uh, uh, I probably shouldn't say ham. None of these civilizations can eat that. You guys know what I mean. Full full scale production of these uh, cows. And what's the cattle ranch food passive income? Looking pretty nice. He's only got six villages on food. And despite that, the Mister is getting 450 food per minute. That's uh, pretty impressive, considering essentially a villager can effectively gather 40 resources per minute. With uh, six villagers on food, you'd expect that to be a bit of quick maths here. Uh, 240 food per minute, but it's actually getting almost double that. But the, uh, the cattle's definitely getting some food for him. I really like the uh, the skins on the, the builders. Look at that house. It looks very nice there for the Ottomans. I think, for me, because the civilizations are so different, it really makes the game exciting. As we see the military school coming out for Marine Lord and the Ottomans. And that will enable him to get the viziers out there. We had a quick look at some of these uh, vizier kind of researchers that you can get. So as the game progresses, as you get more e XP or experience by training units or advancing to the next age, you get more viziers and you can actually choose certain researchers to, to choose from to boost up your economy or boost up your civilization or empire if you will and uh it looks like out of the first three i do feel like this is the best one anatolian hills spawns eight sheep at the landmark town center and increases villager mining speed by 10 percent that's a pretty decent boost there as you can see a lot of sheep to hen out there because of that he did get eight of them and the other alternatives you have potentially is the mehter drums spawn one mehter at the landmark town center and of course the Mehters can do other things like increase movement speed to units at the same formation by 15% for example. You could also look to get two Imams at the landmark town centre. Imams area heal nearby units for one health per second. I think that doesn't really read well. I think there might be a bit of an error on the tooltip there. But anyway, as we see a third town centre coming up from Marinos to both players playing this pretty passively. Going for a very much an economy boom. And we've seen this before actually to be fair because... Um, on maps like Oasis, they're kind of like this at times. Uh, especially with Age of Empires 2, which is, I believe, where the map has its origins. As we see a Farimba garrison coming up here. Unique to the Marlins, quickly produces barracks and archery range units five at a time. Unit cost is converted to gold and reduced by 20%. Wait, what? It's kind of almost giving me the Burger of Palace kind of vibes here. Quickly produces barracks and archery range units. Five at a time. Unit cost is converted to gold and reduced by 20%. Okay, so it's just a full cost of gold. I think you don't need food or wood or anything. You just need gold for this then, I think. Quite possibly. We'll have to have a check on that when it, when it when it's fully built. But that's super interesting. Really heavy gold-oriented civilization, isn't it, the Malians? We see a Donso coming out. I've not seen this unit before. In the stealth forest, firing off at the spears. Pretty cool looking unit there. 
Whoa, did you guys just see that? So it's got a ranged attack and then it's got a melee attack as well. He's fighting in the stealth forest there. I want to take a look at the Donso. Infantry best used against mounted units periodically throws a javelin when attacking from ranged. Anti-cavalry specialist comes with melee armor. Weak against armored infantry. Countered by archers and longbowmen. Okay, so I mean, this feels a lot like a spearman, right? It feels kind of a lot like a spearman. But what's so cool about this unit is that it's, it fires a ranged attack and then goes into a, like a melee army, con um, like a melee attack. So it's like a spearman, except it can start by giving a ranged attack and then go to a normal melee attack. Pretty interesting. All right, go to the next stage now almost. Uh, Yusuf in the chat is mentioning that an example of a new wild animal can be the lion because the lion is in Africa and is historically distributed in Anatolia. Yeah, interesting. I mean, I don't know if um, I don't know if Muslims can eat lions. Though. That's the question. I mean, I, I think I know what you mean, but that's just an example, right? So you imagine if they had different animals, like more animals, and I mean, that would be a crazy headache for balance, though, to be fair. But I hear what you're saying. Maybe like another animals and another animal that muslims could eat that'd be pretty cool to see but i mean it's pretty interesting we're seeing cows already i don't think we see cows for any other civilization and we're seeing it for the malians as we see the istanbul imperial palace going to be taking marine lord up to the next stage to the castle age itself double the imperial council experience around the landmark and increase the vizier point limit by plus two let me just take a, a second to appreciate how good this looks this looks so good. It looks pretty modern though, I have to say. Like in terms of... In terms of... I don't know about... Not so much architecture, but it just looks modern. But I do like the Ottoman buildings. In the north. Bit of an aggression here. The Dutton... The, the, the Donso rather. The veteran Donso from the Malians coming forward. Both players now in the castle. Mister walling up the right side. Marine or walling up the west. Although that's open now. Have either players gone to the middle yet? Not yet. Looks like Marino is on the mission too. Oh, look at the mosque here for the Mister and the Malians. We'll be training some imams. Looking to get some of those relics, I suspect. What if he dons uh, javelin throwers? Okay, a couple of veteran donsos, a couple of javelin throwers. Let's take a quick look at the javelin thrower. Ranged infantry effective against other ranged units. Anti-ranged specialist. Increased weapon range. Comes with ranged armor. Low health counter by horsemen. That's really interesting because, so the Donso are countered by Archer and Longbows, right? But the Javelin Throwers are good against Archer and Longbows. And the Donso are good at, against Cavalry, and the Cavalry counter the Javelin Throwers. So if you could just build Javelin Throwers and Donso for the Malians, you're kind of laughing here, you feel. As the army does head towards the north now. It's like Marino trying to get Moscow, but he doesn't have that many units. Go for Knights here from the three stables. Ottoman's getting the knights, pretty cool to see. Here comes the fight. Don't know if uh, the Mister has enough Donso though. We'll need more than this because there's a lot of units coming out here. Oh, here's the Mehter drumming away. Mehter's drumming away. We don't see much of this. Let's turn around. I'll be honest, I want to focus on the Mehter. I can't see him behind the tree though. It's a bit unfortunate. He's hiding in the stealth of the tree. Oh, look at him drum away. Look at him, look at him, look at him go. I have to say, that's pretty awesome. Beating away at his drums. The unique unit for the uh, the Ottomans. Lots of personality from the civilizations. This is what I love about this state of the game so far at the moment. And this DLC in particular, because, I mean, you've got civilizations like the English and the French, right? Pretty standard, not too crazy, nothing too major in terms of what's going on in terms of game mechanics and whatnot. And you've got lots of interesting game mechanics with other civilizations like the Rus. Uh, and now we've really extended the bar with the Ottomans and the Malians, and uh, we're going to be seeing some really good games, I feel, from these two civilizations. Knights going to head forward, but it just feels like they don't have enough knights there for Marino. The Donso will be dealing with that pretty nicely, I feel. As uh, the Mister and the Marino head away from each other, don't want to fight too quickly, too fast. And the military school is starting to produce those units. Military school can be assigned to produce one type of unit continuously at no cost. However, they are produced at a slower rate. Military unit production rate is increased by 25 to 33 to 40% by age, while within the influence of a blacksmith or university. 
Okay, so you've got to make sure the blacksmith and the university is around there. The Istanbul Observatory increases the bonus to 60%. Holy moly, the observatory. Now, what is that, though? What is that question? Is the observatory essentially the university? Probably is, right? Probably the same as the university. But where are these villages? Oh, those are archers. They look like villages for a second there. But I quite like the touch here by Marino choosing to play green because, of course, I think there's a lot of green colour with the Islamic tradition and faith and... Uh, the Ottomans flag is green as well, so it's kind of nice. Wallolo trying to be brought off here, but Marino takes care of that. And he's going to head forward with his knights. He's got the mobility, but there's a couple of Donso there. Going to be chasing this in for the Mister. The infantry number is looking pretty crazy here for Mister, as we said. And I think in part, I mean, those four knights, if they get chased down, they're dead. But this is the Farumba garrison. Quickly produces barracks and archery range units at five. Units five at a time. Oh, do these just cost gold? Yeah, look at this, guys. So the units just purely cost gold. Which is kind of interesting. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. So this makes sense. This actually kind of makes sense now. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you what makes sense after this fight, because you're probably wondering, what makes sense? I'll keep saying it makes sense, but we're going to take a look at this engagement first. As we see a couple of veterans Sibahi on the front line with a couple of archers in behind. The Donso engage with the javelin throwers in behind. They're taking an effective fight here if you're... Mister going to win that fight easy. The Sibahi won't be able to deal with the spears, or the Donso rather, I should say. But okay, now let me explain what makes sense. Take a look at this gold or this pit mine. There's no gold left underneath it, but it's still generating 90 gold per minute. So the pit mine, it can extract gold passively infinitely. But of course, the villagers still mine the gold. So they don't have like a crazy infinite gold where the villagers can just mine the gold mine and it just infinitely stays there. That would be a little bit crazy. So the villagers mine out the gold, but the pit stays uh, behind passively generating or getting the gold, as you can see now. It's a bit clicky, it's a bit clunky to click, but yeah. Yeah, as you can see, the gold is going down because of the mining of the villagers, which kind of makes sense. We should kind of expect that already anyway. All righty, kind of few units heading forward there. We see the veteran Sipahi on the front line again with the Donsos and the Javelin Throwers. The Donsos is actually heading to the middle of the fight now. A couple of Javelin Throwers kind of caught out there a little bit there. The archers are behind there for the Ottomans. The army of composition of choice is the archers and the uh, the Sipahi for Marinod, with the Mister going for javelin throwers and the Donso as the Malians. I mean, it's really interesting how the Malians can just really kind of rely on these two units. The Donso, which acts as a spearman effectively, and the javelin thrower. Which would be good against archers. And what more could you want, right? Taking the fight here now. The Donso is getting caught out a little bit. The archers want to focus fire on the Donsos. If the Donsos numbers go down, that will leave an opportunity for the Zipahi to head in there. And I, I really like the dynamics of the fights for the Mongol, for the uh, the Malians rather. There's the Mangonel there. That's the counter, really. The Mangonel is something that the Mister will need to deal with because the Ma the Mangonel will deal with the uh, deal with the Donsos and the Javelin Throwers. Ooh, it could be a Wallolo coming out. There is that Wallolo being activated by Mister dragging the army in play. Mister might get the Wallolo. Marino not react. He's going to lose a lot of army here. He gets a lot. Mm, he got a little bit lost there, a little bit. Mangonel on the back line behind the Star Forest, pushing forward that army. Mr. Taking the fight though, Mangonel could do some damage here. And here come the veteran Soffer. The, the veteran Soffer going to try and take down the Mangonel. If that happens, that'll be very, very key. Yeah, happens. Soffer take care of it. A lot of Soffer coming forward. Their cheaper cost, high movement speed, strong, strong in melee combat. They're countered by spearmen and crossbows. This is super interesting because the Malians, if they can mass up Donso and Javelin throws, their only real counter is Mangonel's. Because they can't go horsemen or, or cavalry because of the Donso. And they can't go archers because of the javelin throwers. So that's a really interesting to think about. And when you add in the Dons uh, the uh, the Sofa in the mix, the Sofa can snipe out the siege like this. The Manganel gonna get an attack there. Doesn't lose all that much damage though. Doesn't doesn't lose all that much HP there. And the Sofa gonna snipe the Manganel. Oh, that was a decent shot. The Mister heading forward towards the base. The Marine Lord's base is kind of overrun here. He's under attack, a lot of pressure coming out for these from these units. A lot of military here from the Mister. Pushing Marinod back towards the middle of his base. And Marinod losing a lot here. 65 villagers for Mister, 125 for Marinod. Get the feeling that Marinod overboomed here. Didn't produce the army he needs because he's only got 
He's only got a 5 at the moment versus the 59. Marine Order's a bit greedy in the end. He has actually also gone towards the middle, getting the economy in the middle, docking in the middle. But would it be too late because the landmark's going to be under attack so f soon? And there it is. Marine Order taps out. The Mister takes this game. What a fantastic game between the Ottomans and the Malians. Between two pro players of Age of Empires 4 with the Mister coming up on top. The Malians taking over the Oasis and triumphing over the Ottomans in this game. Hope you guys enjoyed this casted game. And if you're watching the VOD later on, do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you're watching the live stream, we'll be carrying on casting many more games. And if this is the end for you watching the VOD, take care and see you next time.